views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Voices of Women is a top radio show that gives voice to the personal stories of women. It will inspire women and enlighten men to follow their dreams and create positive changes in their lives. Whether the audience listens to best-selling authors or a layperson like themselves, they'll realize there are others with similar experiences and feelings to their own. This show will give women tools they can use every day, which will empower them to step out of their boxes and create the changes they desire in their life. Chris inspires women to find their voice Speak up and become leaders of their own life. Everyone has their gifts to share with the world, and it's time for women to work together to bring honor and respect to the feminine voice, which is within all people, men and women. Topics include personal growth, spirituality, creativity, leadership, and divine feminine. Now here's your host, Chris Stanis. Welcome to Voices of Women. It's a lovely Friday, and today I was just listening to the intro, and and we're going to be talking about um, cha- you know changes in our in our culture and our society that's been going on. Um, first, I just want to announce before I forget: next weekend, June fourth, is our Sacred Pampering Day for Women in Seattle, and this is a fabulous day. It's very intimate. There's only a few spots available for people to come get healing gifts from our community. And uh, there's a diversity of, of healers that come and body workers, intuitive readers, energy healers, all that. And, you know, for $50, you get 100 minutes to explore and have a great day. So check that out at our website, womenofwisdom.org. And so uh, speaking about change and how we live is the new book we're going to talk about today. And the author is Bella DiPaolo. She is an award-winning social psychologist and the author of Singled Out. She was described by Atlantic Magazine as America's foremost thinker and writer on the single experience. And Bella has conducted years of research and traveled across America to discover a diverse and fascinating cross-section of pioneers who are experimenting and expanding the paradigm of how we live. So she's interviewed people, gotten their stories, been in their homes, um, done a lot of in-depth research, and she's exploring the variety of thriving life spaces. And in her book, she's offering an inspiring field guide of choices for anyone who's seeking to personally redefine what a home and family means in this 20, uh, what century are we in? We're in the 21st century, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's like, it sounds like, I almost was going to say 22nd, I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay. okay. Anyway, um, Paula's, um, um, Bella DiPaolo, her website is belladipaolo.com. Bella and D-E-P-A-U-L-O. So welcome, Bella. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show, and thanks for that really nice intro. Yeah, well, I, you know, I was fascinated with this topic because, you know, you do hear of various um, people who are, you know, living a different way these days, and and you put it all into a book, so there's just fascinating stories in there, and we love stories. But first, let's hear your story, how, how you became interested in this shift of living. Right. So I've been um, writing about single people and single life for well over a decade, and I write the Living Single blog for Psychology Today. And I once wrote this article for my blog called Not Going Nuclear, So Many Ways to Live in Love. And I talked about how, you know, we think about the nuclear family as the touchstone, as that's the way we all live. But in fact, fewer than 20% of all households are comprised of mom, dad, and the kids. So if so few people are living that way, how are they living? And I started talking about the, all the different possibilities. And my readers were really intrigued by this, and they started sharing their stories of the different ways that they were living and the kinds of ways they lived growing up that were not nuclear family households that they really cherished and valued and loved to think about and recreate. And so that became the 
nugget of this new book, How We Live Now, which is really saying, okay, how do we live not mostly as single people, but not just as single people. It turns out that even I even, even interviewed some couples and some and some nuclear families who wanted something different than the isolated house in the suburbs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and you know we kind of when was that? That was so big, like in the eighties and nineties of going out, to, you know, that movement out to the suburbs, yeah. and and now yeah. you, you talk about too, it's switching where people are coming back to the city. It is, yes, and um, young people too really are not that enamored of suburban living. You know, they like living maybe in a city or near a downtown area where they don't need a car. You remember when it used to be such a big deal to get your driver's license in your car? And now a lot of young adults are just kind of shrugging and saying, it's okay, I'll take public transportation and save on the money and, and get around just almost as easily. Yeah, and it depends on where you live, too, as far as what's easy, and on the, sure. depending on the public transportation. Yeah, for sure. But um, I know for me it's hard to think of, like, where I go is, well, there's not, you know, that would take me two hours to get there by bus yeah. and, and yeah. all that. But, um, right. and, I, and, I, and, you know, and I, um, some of this, how much is this driven by the millennials? Because they're, they're needing to live in a different way, you know, with the economy, yeah. getting the jobs, that you know, the money, the rent. Right. You know, that was, Seattle, yeah. the rent is so high for people. Right. And you, maybe you saw this. There was this Pew Research Report just released yesterday or the day before showing that for the first time ever, more young adults live with their parents than with a spouse or a romantic partner, which is really amazing because in 1960, 62% of all 18 to 34-year-olds we're living with a spouse or romantic partner. And now, today, um, more than half of men who are 29 and older have not married. <laughs> and more than half of women 27 and older are not married. So if you're not even married, you're not going to be living with a spouse. <laughs> so it's really a dramatic change. So to answer your question, part of the innovation Motivation is coming from young people, but it's also coming from older people who don't want to end up in an institution. It's coming from single mothers and fathers. That's another huge increase in a huge change in our demographics in that there are so many single parents, and they are coming up with wonderful ways to um, raise their kids and get the help and the autonomy they they want as well as the companionship for themselves and their kids. Yes, and it's it's it's, it's great. I, mean, I think people are are looking for community and mm-hmm. and when we're in, isolated in our homes in a single dwelling kind of you know, right. mentality, yeah. we, we don't necessarily know of alternatives. And, so, but I, I think there is that, that searching for, for a community. I remember when I, um, my husband and I traveled around the world for three years. And when I came home, it was a bit culture shock to be here, but six months later I went to <laughs> Europe. I had a chance to go to Europe and I visited friends that yeah. we had traveled with in Asia. Mm-hmm. And so I remember being in Paris and in this community, like getting off the subway and all the shops are right there and then going to their apartment and just having this sense yeah. of community was right near me. I just yeah. felt that. And yeah. I wanted to come home and develop it here. But I was looking around mm-hmm. like, well, how do I develop it here? And then it just happened organically where um, uh, a guy came to live with us because he, mm-hmm. he was from eastern Washington and needed a place to live. He was going to be working in Seattle six months. So he came and lived. Mm-hmm. Um, someone came in house sad and she stayed. Actually, she stayed 20 years. Oh, my gosh. Wow. <laughs> so, uh, so we had this housemate, my husband and I. And, and then also way back in 88, we had a Dutch exchange uh-huh. student. So we brought up someone uh-huh. in for a year to live with us. And so we created it in our home. And, and you know, that... And I think especially if, you know, couples without kids, sometimes there's mm-hmm. that desire to have other people around and yet have your own your own space, exactly. too. I mean, there are some people we know we couldn't live with. It worked out with mm-hmm. the person we were with for 20 years because she had mm-hmm. her she spent she had her space, you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. it and didn't fringe on ours. But mm-hmm. the, finding that mm-hmm. balance and working things out with people. Yeah. But but I but I think it really stems from that need for community. And, yes. and, and there's I, such an isolation out there, it seems yes. like. Yeah, well, I found that across 
all the different kinds of people I talked to and all the different innovative ways they were living, like yours, which is impressive. <laughs> um, there are kind of two things people are looking for. Sure, the community. And that's really important, and, and it can be more difficult as more and more people are are living alone. But there's also that that craving for some privacy and alone time as well. And I uh, and so everybody wants some way to get some solitude. Now, the amount of solitude they want, the ratio of solitude, time alone to time together, varies tremendously from one person to another, but I never interviewed anyone who said, I never want time to myself or some privacy or some autonomy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important, but it's important to know how much it is you need because it is unique. It's it's different for everybody. And you may not know until you start living with people and then you go, whoa, (laughs) wait a minute. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. So I talk to people in the kinds of households you described where you have people living with you who are not related to you and they might be there for a long time and they settle in and it can be great. But in every version of that I saw, people had rooms of their own, Mm -hmm. or maybe even suites of their own. So it wasn't like the old-fashioned communes where everybody shared everything. (laughs) And of all the different living arrangements I studied, there there were only two that were becoming less common over time. One was the nuclear family household, and the other were the old-fashioned communes where people you know, do work on the commune and they share their food and they share their clothes and they share their room. Yeah, that's nobody wants to do that. Or hardly anyone wants to do that anymore. anymore. Okay, well, we need to take a short break right now. We're listening to Voices of Women. We'll come back and talk more about how we live now and we'll talk about some of the popular non-nuclear ways of living in this 21st century. How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com. Ladies, it's time to treat yourself. Join the Women of Wisdom for their annual fundraiser Saturday, June 4th. This is a sacred pampering day for women at North Seattle College. If you are a business and want to be one of our pamperers, we still have space. It's going to be a day to relax and treat yourself. For more information and to get tickets, visit thewowconference.org. That's the W-O-W conference.org. Do you want to achieve your goals? Do you want to strengthen relationships with others? Do you want to improve your financial status? Colette Marie Steffen is partnering with Mark Kettenbach to bring you an energetic upgrade online experience launching in April. Unfold and develop your full potential. Visit energeticupgrade.com today for more information. That's energeticupgrade.com. The doctor is in. Tune in to the hit show, The Psychic Love Doctor, with host Deborah Lee. Deborah's life affirming, highly perceptive reading method has taught Deborah how to zero in on specific problems with relationships, career pursuits, and current roadblocks to success and happiness. Join Deborah Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific and for a special broadcast the second Thursday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Sky Siegel co-hosts one of today's most popular psychic shows, Angels and Answers, with Artie Hoffman as she communicates healing messages from the spirit world. These messages can be astounding, enlightening, and life-changing. Born with the God-given talent of inner guidance and the amazing ability to heal, Sky has healed thousands of people. Schedule a reading with Sky now. Call 908-500-1474 and visit skyofangels.com. Hey everyone, meet my friends at the Maka team. 
The Ancient Inca Root Vegetable Maca is known worldwide for its huge array of health benefits. As a family-run company of true maca specialists, the maca team is here to bring you the best maca the Peruvian mountains has to offer. Yellow maca, used to promote endurance, vitality, fertility, hormone health, and much more is on sale now. I love it. Visit themacateam.com to order yours now. Themacateam.com. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Stanis, and, and we are talking with Bella DiPaolo. She has this new book out, How We Live Now. So we've been talking about all this, 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 this new, new arrangements of living. And um, so let's, um, Bella, talk about some of the you know, most popular non-nuclear ways that you have been um, discovering in your travels and visiting people's homes. Sure. Uh, one of the ways of living that used to be really, really rare and it's becoming more popular, is living in a house that you share with other people you're not related to. Now, we used to think about that as something that uh, young kids did, maybe college students or adults just starting out, and that still happens. But now it's happening all across the age range. Of course, we also have a model of that for older people, the golden girls, and older people are... Really, many of them are really enjoying setting up a household of their friends, people they enjoy being with, and sharing a home. But it's also happening among people who are in the middle age ranges. So it's quite an interesting development. And there are all different versions of it. You were talking about um, the household you. Uh, are living in, in which people came for maybe 20 years or maybe shorter, and and so you share your place with them. And I found many examples of people sharing with friends or people they they were just getting to know, and others with more themes about them. So, for example, a woman who had come to the States from China with her young son and had a hard time um, with the language and the culture, once she settled in, she decided to get a big house and rent the rooms to other people who were coming to the States for the first time and help them settle in. So she has this wonderful um, communal household. And another example is a woman who uh, would take people into her house who were flailing a bit, maybe somebody who had just aged out of the foster system, and she would welcome them into her home. And she ended up having, I think, 25 different people staying with her over the course of 21 years. And she created this wonderful, friendly place where people were like family to each other. And she also had these dinners once a week where people could invite not just the people in the household, but their friends from the community. So there are all these wonderful, innovative ways of living in a very close way, which is sharing a house under the same roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, you know, it um, came to mind when you were saying that another way is the VRBOs where people are sharing their homes, even though, even though it's a constant turnover, but they're, it's yeah. a, you know, it's money making for them, but it's also making right. space if they got a big house and uh -huh. it, and it adds some sense of, you know, getting to um, meeting new people and having yeah. interesting experiences and having kind of a, you know, and, and then you can, yeah. you can, you can base it on how much you want to give, you know, I mean, I've heard mm -hmm. of some people where, you know, you know, they offer them a meal with them or, mm -hmm. or, you know, yeah. I mean, there's, you can set your limits of what you want, but it's another way to kind of build a, um, not be isolated and, and be around people. Yes. Yeah, so one of the people I interviewed had a home where she had extra rooms to rent out. And some of them she rented out for lengthy periods of time, but she always kept one space for Airbnb because she liked the energy of meeting new people and talking to them and, you know, and making breakfast for them and showing them around. She just really liked meeting new people all the time. So 
Uh, so that really worked out well for her too. Yes. Well, and we were talking about millennials. I, uh, you talk about people coming together, and I know people mm-hmm. here too who share a big house, and everybody mm-hmm. has a room, and then they have a community mm-hmm. kitchen and dining and living mm-hmm. area, and yeah. and um, they they're kind of almost forced to be creative in the sense that that with the economy and not finding mm-hmm. um, you know good paying jobs right now, yeah. it, it's been a necessity. Yeah. But I also think it's it's part of their um, what they want. Uh, yeah. In Yes, that companionship, you know, when you're in college or maybe in in a first job, if you're not working from home, you've got people around you all the time and you can sometimes some people get to really like that and they want to recreate that in their own living spaces. Another Mm -hmm. version of what um, young people are doing to deal with the financial pressures, but not just that, is living with their parents. And a lot of people make fun of that, but it's actually a re- can be a really positive experience. In fact, there was just a study published by the Pew Research Group a day or two ago showing that for the first time ever, more young adults live with their parents than with a spouse or a romantic partner, which is really a major shift. And... Some of the factors are the obvious ones that it can be hard for young people if they're not finding jobs or if they're not finding good jobs so they can stay with their parents and save some money that way. And, of course, the other part of it is that there are more and more and more people living single for longer. So in 1956... The age at which people first got married was as low as as it had ever been. It was like 22 for men and 20 for women. But now it's all the way up to 29 for men and 27 for women. That means that of all the men who get married, half of them, by the time they reach age 29, have never been married. And same thing for women. Half of women who eventually will get married have not yet done so by the time they reach age 27. So that's a lot of people. And, of course, more and more people will stay single all their life, as I have, by choice and with utter and total joy. So um, when you have so many people who are staying single, then that increases the likelihood that they will live with their parents, since married couples rarely live with their parents, maybe about 5% too. Um, But there's another factor that I think is really interesting about why so many young people are living with their parents these days. And it's because compared to, say, in the 60s, people, young people and their parents actually like each other. (laughs) They enjoy each other's company. Uh, The parents, you know, there are exceptions, obviously, but the parents generally like having them around, and the kids aren't just freeloaders. They do pitch in in various ways, and that's very different from the time of of the 60s and the 70s when parents thought they had raised some sort of aliens with their weird long hair and their weird musical taste and their countercultural values. That was a very different time. Mm-hmm. When you wrote, you write in your book too that there was that worry of the, you know, kids becoming um, not independent and, yeah. and yeah, you, sh- you showed that with, or parents that are too, um, too involved in their kids' lives yes, when they're living with them, yes. and 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 yet they're they're showing studies that the 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 young people are, and we're talking probably twenty year olds and stuff. Yes, they yes. they they are more stable and more emotionally yes. secure having That's that relationship. Right. And yes, it's amazing. Um, they hear all the media scare stories about how there's helicopter parents and the kids are failure to launch and their help, the parents are helping too much. So they sometimes feel badly about it and they think there's something wrong with how much help they're getting from their parents. But in the ways you described, they actually end up doing better. 
Yeah, and, and I think, I mean, it shows that maybe we're maturing a little bit that the parent-child relationships are improving. <laughs> they, they are, and it's such an important thing because there are alternatives to living with your parents. Like we discussed living in a household full of your friends and people you enjoy being with, or if you have the financial resources, living on your own. So living with your parents isn't something you have to do, even if you're in a difficult way financially, but it's a way people are choosing to do. And an interesting thing that Pew Foundation noticed is it wasn't surprising that more young people lived with their parents during the recession, but what really surprised them is when the recession was over, the kids stayed. (laughs) And I think that's partly because they and both, both they and their parents enjoyed each other's company. And there's probably a variety of reasons. I mean, they still can save a lot of money, too, for oh, saving sure. saving up for the future or whatever. Right, right, right. Or the right living situation of moving hasn't showed, you know, their face. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a lot yeah. of – those are all the obvious ones, but I wanted to point out the yeah. interpersonal one because that so rarely gets noticed. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah, and we tend to get a little judgmental, like, oh, they're still mm-hmm. living with you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and young adults who live with their parents longer also stay in touch with them more once they do move out. So it gets to be, um, you know, a kind of nice relationship over time, not just when they're living with them. You know, and that's that's not to say that it always works out well. You know, sometimes it's terrible and, you know, and and they all hate it. But (laughs) those are the exceptions. Mm-hmm. Well, and two, if you have that relationship that's building when, you know, the um, mm-hmm. children are in their 20s and 30s, then it's going to mm-hmm. continue on when the parents are needing more help. When they get that's older, right. they're going to have that's a good relationship um, where they're not going to be deserted by their kids or, you know, they're going to have a, a, a um, some help mm-hmm. and some community. Well, we need to take a break now. Um, we're okay. going to come back and talk more with Bella DiPaolo when we come back. Okay. ready to experience Truth Talk Radio with host Deb Acker. Tune in to Truth Talk Radio each Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com to illuminate the truth in your daily life as you experience life, love, and abundance from a whole new perspective. This hit show will leave you feeling lighter and bring you into a place of infinite possibilities every day in every way. Visit TruthTalkRadioShow.com for upcoming transformative topics and guests. Tune in to The Jen Royster Show, intuitive guidance to inspire your life, each Thursday at 8 a.m. Pacific and 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This amazing show is an inspirational hour that will take you on an epic metaphysical journey to discover the spiritual approach to life's greatest challenges. Dr. Jen is an internationally known intuitive counselor, spiritual teacher, and energy healer. Call in for intuitive readings and visit JenRoyster.com for more information. Are you, Are you searching? Are you searching? Are you looking for a sign? A message, for a, sign. a message you need to hear from the great unknown, from the most mysterious place that is the most familiar to your soul in the depths of who you are. The universe put someone here to talk to, someone God gave a blessing to that you may find insight with. The Angel Lady.net. 1 800 323 1790. 1 800 323 Awaken to your radiant, authentic self. For over 15 years, Soul Purpose Advocate Nancy Monson has been focused on leading change in the lives of those looking to live their true purpose. She is devoted to supporting people and living a soul-directed life every day. Let Nancy help you overcome fear, worry, and doubt. Visit EverydaySpirituality.com to learn how Nancy can be your Soul Purpose Advocate. Ladies, it's time to treat yourself. Join the Women of Wisdom for their annual fundraiser Saturday, June 4th. This is a sacred pampering day for women at North Seattle College. If you are a business and want to be one of our pamperers, we still have space. 
It's going to be a day to relax and treat yourself. For more information and to get tickets, visit thewowconference.org. That's the W-O-W conference.org. Have you ever tried to make lifestyle changes but had difficulty following through? Imagine what it would be like to get up each morning with energy, clarity, and motivation to tackle the day. If you want to get past limiting barriers that are preventing you from living your best life, join holistic health and wellness coach T. Carrie Mitchell each month on The Dr. Pat Show or visit Lifestyle120.com today and start to receive the personal attention you deserve. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Danis, and we were talking with Bella DiPaolo. So, Bella, um, why don't you give people your website? People can find yeah. out more about you. Okay. It's belladipaolo.com, B-E-L-L-A-D-E-P-A-U-L-O. Um, you can also search for singled out, and it would probably come up, up or any kind of topics about singles might land you on my website, belladipaolo.com, B-E-L-L-A-D-E-P-A-U-L-O. I wrote the book Singled Out as well as the one we're talking about now, How We Live Now, and I write the Living Single column for Psychology Today as well as some other blogs like um, Single at Heart at Psych Central. Mm-hmm. Great. So... I guess I want, I want to ask you what was the most shocking to you in your research because you came across a, probably a lot of interesting scenarios. I did. Well, you know, two of the demographic changes that are happening are that people are staying single longer, sometimes for their life, and that more people are raising kids as single parents. But there are some people who just really want to have kids but don't want to raise them alone and they get to a point where they don't want to wait anymore to find a romantic partner or maybe some of them don't even care about a romantic partner they were never interested in that but they want to have kids and they want to raise them with someone else and so there are these websites now for example family by design where you can search for other people who want the same thing. And so you find another adult who's in a similar situation. They really want kids. They don't want to raise them alone. And you come together with that other person and commit to raising children together, at least staying together as co-parents until the kids become adults, but not committing to being romantic partners. So you could each go your own way romantically, but you're together in the sense of raising children together. And that was just such an amazing thing to me. I had no idea this was going on, but there are websites in the United States and Great Britain, and they're very careful. They're, they have guidelines and resources for people who want to do that so they encourage them to get to know each other really well before they take on a kid's decision and they fill out these long questionnaires about their parenting philosophies and um, what they want in a place to live and a person to raise their children with. So it's it was something that I had just never fathomed before I started doing this research, even though when I started, I understood that people were living in all sorts of innovative ways. Yeah, and you hear about, you know, people, especially women who even want a child and they have it on their own or they adopt and do that. So this mm-hmm. is another extension of that. And and I, I'm glad you mentioned the safety factor, of, you know, because you could get yeah. yourself in a real interesting or uh, right. not so good yeah. situation where especially parenting uh-huh. styles can be, you know, very mm-hmm. good. And then also that they're living together to do it. Now, are there any are there any that are having children and co-parenting but choosing not maybe live in close proximity of each other right. but not living yeah. together? Yes, that's an option, too. 
Yeah, for sure. And then there was something else that was really uh, impressive about single parents. And it was started by this woman who got divorced and was raising her son by herself. And she felt really isolated and lonely and decided that what she really needed was, what she really wanted was another single mother to share a home with so that she and the other single mother would have each other to as companions, as helpers, and their kids would have each other as friends. So she put out this notice just in her local community and got 18 answers right away. Mm -hmm. And then she was thinking, if 18 people are interested just in my community, how many would be interested in the entire state or in the entire nation. And she now has this website called Coabode, C-O-A-B-O-D-E, where single moms from across the United States and in Canada too can search for other single mothers who want to share a place together and raise their kids together. And just like the other example that I was describing, they are very careful, so you are encouraged to meet with the other single mom and her kids many times, get to know them, make sure you feel comfortable with them, fill out a long questionnaire about your parenting practices and your beliefs about raising kids and what you want in a house, what you want in a roommate, what you um, what you can contribute financially, and people who do this actually end up talking more extensively and in greater depth about their values and their philosophies than most ordinary couples who just get married and have kids the usual way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're they're needing to find out if it's going to mm -hmm. work, whereas you get married for, for kind of different right. reasons. That's a romantic right. interest. And, and then you right. run into all sorts of problems or, or, yeah, or ha have to work them out. Yeah, I guess you don't talk about all these different values relevant to child rearing. You might not even think to talk about them. And yet, in if you go into these kinds of systems um, where there are resources and lists of questions, you do that by design. In fact, one of the sites is called Family by Design. So you're very thoughtful and mindful about what you're doing, what matters to you, what your values are, what you want your values to be for your children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Well, um, and another aspect in your book that I think is very important, and I know I, there's lots of examples here in Seattle, is the co-housing development. Yeah. Yes, in fact, one of the co-housing communities I went to was in Bellingham, which is not too far from mm -hmm. Seattle. So in co-housing communities, people each have a place of their own. So it might be a single person living alone or a couple or a nuclear family or a multi-generational household. It could be any combination of people that you'd find anywhere else. But there are several differences. One is all the people in a co-housing community come together because they want to be neighborly. They want to have something like a real community, like an old-fashioned village. So their houses or apartments are arranged around a green space, so that creates a certain sense of community. And they all share what they call a common house. So this is a, a house in addition to the ones they have for themselves where everybody can come together to share a meal now and then, or the houses also have, the common house also has rooms that cater to whatever are the interests of the people in that community. So if you have a very musical community, you might have a music room or an arts room or a shop or woodworking. Or um, if there are kids, you might have playrooms. You might have playrooms for kids of different ages. You might have a laundry room so everybody doesn't have to have space in their own home for laundry. The mailboxes are often there so that people will just um, spontaneously run into each other as they go to pick up the mail. So it's a really fascinating 
innovation, I think, where people get to have their own spaces so they get their privacy, they get their autonomy, but they walk out their front door and they have community. They have these people that they've developed this community with. They have the people that they see uh, for the meals that they share together in the common house. They work on the grounds together. Uh, it's a it's very it's a fascinating way of having your privacy, but having some real community too. And having space around you, you know, because you can buy a plot of land. And I visited one right. where there's a, some people are into the gardens. There's this huge garden area. Yeah. There's, there's a, you know, there's acreage, you know, and you and you right. and yet the houses are are close enough together that there's community. And a big house uh-huh. where uh-huh. you have a a, a large um, community kitchen and dining yeah. hall and a meeting space. Yeah. And it does it does bring about what I is important to me is like. Um, talking circles and, and circle leadership where you yeah. have to come together and those kinds of places, they have to meet regularly. They probably meet once they a week do. and they you know, do. you have to discuss issues. And so you uh-huh. have to, and you got to listen to everybody. You got to hear okay. everybody's voices. And so it's a yeah. new, you know, it's, it's less hierarchical that there's probably not one person and you know, you might You're, make, you might need a coordinator to coordinate stuff, or, but you'd probably yeah. have different roles and all that. So it, it adds yeah. to, how we are with each other in a positive way, too. Yes, they're very egalitarian, and they do try to make their decisions in a way that everybody is heard and not in a hierarchical fashion. And you're right about the spaces, too. Um, They bar cars from coming in the middle so that you have this big open space where there are almost always gardens and um, green spaces and walkways. Uh, so it's really, it's really delightful. Mm-hmm. Well, we're going to take a quick break um, soon now too. And when we come back, I want to talk about one of the uh, significant relationships that you, you found in this is the friendship. That yeah. uh, affirming friendships. And so when we come back, we'll talk about that and more with Bella DiParlo. Ladies, it's time to treat yourself. Join the Women of Wisdom for their annual fundraiser Saturday, June 4th. This is a sacred pampering day for women at North Seattle College. If you are a business and want to be one of our pamperers, we still have space. It's going to be a day to relax and treat yourself. For more information and to get tickets, visit thewowconference.org. That's the W-O-W conference.org. Wow. Hey, everyone. Welcome. Uh, Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. This is Talk Radio to Thrive By. I'm telling you, I got to pinch myself some days because when each of us gets called to do something that we so not thought was in our real house to do for a purpose that's so much greater than us, we get to show up and shine. If you would like to show up and shine on the Dr. Pat Show as a co-host or sponsor, send us an email to inspire at the drpatshow.com. Are you ready for a game changer? Sarah Westall is bringing you Business Game Changers Radio. Sarah brings you leading experts, visionaries, and newsmakers who provide the best commentary on big issues and cutting-edge innovations. Sarah's 20 years as a business executive will help you think like an entrepreneur with expertise, energy, and attitude. Tune in to Business Game Changers Mondays at noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Get ready to rid yourself of all that is weighing you down and holding you back from living the life you want for yourself. Coming Clean, The Art of Transparency with Katherine Moss is a hit show for women in recovery who are ready to live life on purpose. Tune in and let Katherine help you live your truth one day at a time. Live each Tuesday, 9 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Get into it for 2016. Do you want more prosperity, clarity, energy, and balance in your life? Join Lynn Brown now through March for one of her amazing workshops, each focusing on a key part of living your best life. For more information, 
And to register for one of these amazing workshops, visit lynnbrownevent.com. That's lynnbrownevent.com. And get into it this 2016 with Lynn Brown. Hi, this is Leslie Fontaine, and my show is Sheer Alchemy on TransformationTalkRadio.com. When we're bogged down with our emotions, the hardships that plague us in our relationships, at work, our finances, we literally can't see the higher plane where we could be operating from. Tune in to Leslie Fontaine, Sheer Alchemy on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Welcome back to Voices of Women. I'm Chris Danis. Uh, we've been talking about the book, How We Live Now, uh, with Bella DiPaolo. And so another aspect that we haven't touched on yet that you talk about in your book and you have, ex- you know, I mean, you really tell people stories. There's some people, some names, are, you know, people don't mind that their name and some, some you had to, you know, create f- fake names, mm-hmm. but is a couples, you know, couples living apart yeah. and right. living, living across the street from each other or down the block mm-hmm. or a mile mm-hmm. away, but they're still couples and they come together mm-hmm. whenever they want to mm-hmm. come together. Right. I thought this was a fascinating development, and you see more and more stories in the news about it in the media these days. These are couples who are totally committed to each other. They're not couples who are just, you know, trying out the relationship or they're not ready to really commit yet, but they decide that they really want their own space. They want the relationship, but they want to live in places of their own. And so they've been called living apart together, L-A-T, or sometimes dual dwelling duos. Um, And I think this is happening in part because people are now growing up getting used to having their own space and their own choices and their own preferences. For example, um, among parents who can afford it, afford it, many of them now give their kids their own rooms when they're growing up rather than having to you know, share a room with a sibling, which was much more common before. And, and then when the kids get to college, they want their own room. They don't want to share. At least they want a room in a suite so they have some privacy. And you know, some people just get to that point where they just really like their privacy and their space. And so they have this coupled relationship, which is important to them, but they don't want to do the usual thing of moving in together. And some of the people I interviewed did try to do it the usual way, you know, where they Um, get together and they cohabit or they get married and they live together and then they find that the relationship is getting very conflictual. They're getting on each other's nerves and they decide to move out and have places of their own. And this one uh, person I interviewed who did this said when she and her Um, husband first moved out, all their friends thought, oh, that relationship is doomed. And she said, no, that wasn't the point at all. They moved out, not because they were breaking their couple status apart, but because they were saving it. And by having that space to themselves, they actually were able to have a much stronger relationship mm-hmm. and, and it might save you know with our divorce rate it might actually save yeah. more marriages people did that because yeah. you know you love you love each other but sometimes you get together right. and, and just the lifestyle is like you know you have mm-hmm. to you got to learn mm-hmm. to live with how they brush their teeth and how they exactly. keep their, how they <laughs> yeah. keep the room clean and there's always difference of how you know yeah. a clump, you know how we how we keep things tidy or not tidy right. it's yeah very individual it can be the smallest thing. Like, so this one mm-hmm. woman I was interviewed loved garlic, but her husband hated the smell of garlic. And she said, you know, are we really going to get divorced over the smell of garlic? Yeah. So, um, and I think the really the bottom line from all of these different ways of living that I, that I um, examined, and there's many more that we didn't even get to, is that we are so 
fortunate today. We are living in a time and place where we don't all have to live the same way. We can think about what works for us as individuals, what makes a meaningful, joyful, productive life, and then choose that way of living, even if it's really unusual and it, it seems radical to everyone else. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, I think that's a really important part, point because, you know, we grow up thinking things are supposed to be this way, you know, like mm-hmm. say you, you know, mm-hmm. go to college, you get married, mm-hmm. you have kids, you have a house, mm-hmm. all that. There's so many mm-hmm. options now. And if, it, you know, so you're not, you're not tied mm-hmm. down to what society says to do. I think yeah. we're a lot more independent now and doing what, what's yeah. right, for, what's right for us. So how is this, how is this um, going with the general population and society? Are they, is it a, is it becoming accepted to look at these various living styles now and people being more open to it? If- yeah, I think, you know, the more people do this and their friends notice and their relatives notice, uh, the more it becomes something that's familiar rather than unusual. Mm-hmm. And so something like living apart together, that was really unusual and people only knew the you know, the Hollywood examples of a Woody Allen and <laughs> Mia Farrell and that kind of thing. But now there are, people know all sorts of people who are doing that. So it doesn't seem so strange anymore. And I think for all of these different ways of living, as more people see other people doing it, and as people who are doing it uh, flaunt it and <laughs> say, so, you know, this is really working out well for me, it becomes... It multiplies all of our options for how to live. Mm-hmm. So what's your last piece of advice you'd give to someone who's unhappy with how they currently live? What, what do you suggest they they do? I think um, think about what you're unhappy with. Think about ways you've lived in the past that made you happy and see if you can um, find or create a new kind of what I call life space for yourself. And I think we need to think about other kinds of questions than the ones we're usually asked. For example, to what extent do you want to know other people and be known by them? To what, how much control do you want over how much other people get to know you? How much do you like the presence of other people? If you like all those kinds of things, then you probably want more togetherness. Or in contrast, if you really crave solitude, then you probably want a way of living that gives you the most privacy and independence, whether that's living totally alone or living alone but within a community or living alone but as part of a committed couple. So the possibilities are endless. And another great thing about what the options available to you now is that you don't have to give up what you want. So if you really, really want kids and you you never found someone to have kids with or you never cared about that, you know, you you can have kids and raise them in a shared household with co-abode, or you can find someone to parent with you without being your romantic partner. There are just so many ways to have all the big things in life that so many people want, or not have them if you don't want them, and live a full, complete, meaningful life. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today, Bella. Okay. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So everybody can check, you can check our website out at belladipalo.com. I'm sure her book you can find on Amazon as well. Mm-hmm. Um, How We Live Now. How We Live Now. Thank you. Just <laughs> okay. scroll up my screen. to, And um, so, yeah, lots of options and new ways of being in our in our country is, is great. So... We're getting to our close now. I'm Chris Stanis, the founder of Women of Wisdom Foundation. I just want to uh, remind people, um, Pampering Day for Women, June 4th. That's at North Seattle College. You do need to register ahead of time. We do usually sell out. Like as limited spots, just go to womanwisdom.org. And also, um, we have a, an event we do every year with gender uh, reconciliation, gender healing, gender around communications with the Mankind Project. 
with Women of Wisdom, and that is June 18th, and you can read about that on our website as well. That's we've been. This is the third year doing it. It's a great day of the men and women coming together and 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 doing some very fun exercises, having a fun day, a barbecue. We're outside in this lovely park-like setting in a private home of four acres, and um, so check that out on our website, womanofwisdom.org, and you can check out my my book. It's an Amazon bestseller. It was on June 23rd, 19, or was it, what year was it? 2009, yeah, um, that it was a bestseller. And um, also it's award-winning. It's Women of Wisdom, Empowering the Dreams and Spirit of Women. And it's an inspirational book on the divine feminine with lots of different voices, art, poetry, and all that. Um, some of our speakers from the conference and singers. And you can find you can read about that at womanofwisdom.org as well on our products page. You can find it on Amazon. And um, sales um, benefits women of wisdom, and that supports we're a nonprofit organization. So this is the end of our show. We're going to be actually next week. I'll be talking to Cynthia Bricks, who is one of our presenters at our our gender reconciliation day. So we'll be talking about relationships with the between the genders with Cynthia Bricks next week. So have a great weekend, everybody. You've been listening to Voices of Women with Chris Stamos. Tune in each Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 4 p.m. Eastern Time for Voices of Women Today. Radio with Chris Stamos.